Our Bob Valente Auto Ball Late Bottles to give you the starting lineup. Here is Dave Barabalt. And starting on the pole from North Windham, Connecticut, New England Pizza, M&M Concrete Ceiling, the Showroom Auto Body, Midas Muffler, and Custom Concrete bring us the number six of Larry Goss. Outside of him, driving the double zero from North Brantford, Connecticut, it's Ernie Bertrand. Inside row number two, driving the number 61, it's the king of speed, Groton, Connecticut's Ed Reed Jr. Showroom auto body, Midas muffler and custom concrete, M&M concrete ceiling, bring us the 61. To his right, it's the law offices of John Heyman, number 90. That will be Ledyard, Connecticut's Alan Coates. On the inside of row number three, driving the 35, he grabbed the checker the last time we were here at the Speed Bowl. It is Bruce Thomas Jr. of Groton, Connecticut. Sixth starter will be the number 38, PMW Marine, Yankee Remodeler, Puckatuck Tire, Mohawk Northeast, and starting five entertainment for Puckatuck, Connecticut's Joe Curioso III. On the inside of row number four, driving the 13, it is Anthony Macrino, from Waterford, Connecticut. Ready for what should be 30 breathtaking laps in the Bob Valente Auto Mall late model division. Great getaway for Larry Goss and Carter six, but already we have a challenge. You saw how formidable Ernie Bertrand was during qualifying, but he gets a little too high coming off the corner. Right behind him is a 90, the Heyman Law Office's car of, John, of Alan Coates as it ducks into third. Ed Reed is right there, early battle for the lead. Here comes Bertrand, trying to torpedo his way by on the outside. Goss is not allowing that to happen. So the veteran, Larry Goss, those two cars come across simultaneously. Goss has the lead, but almost sitting in his lap is Ernie Bertrand. Here comes Goss again. He has the advantage, but all over him, like a wig on Dolly Parton, is a double zero of Bertrand. Ed Reed is right there. We have five cars flexing their muscles at the front of the field, including Bruce Thomas Jr., last week's winner in car number 35. The script remains the same. Two cars crazy glued together. Bertrand, just a little bit of an advantage. Maybe about the width of a credit card. Goss is not giving up. What a way to get this one started. Unfortunately, Vin Esposito has to leave just when things were getting good. This time it's Goss by centimeters. So it was Bertrand the last time. This time it's Goss. Also in the hunt, here comes Ed Reed. Three wide scenario in turn three. Who will get fried? It looks like Bertrand is gonna survive on the outside, but just barely. And the man who shuffled back, now Goss goes around, headed for the wall, tangled with Colts, tangled with Caroso. And also wildly scrambling is Rich Durrani in car number 77. So the man caught in the middle and the three wide was Larry Goss. He went around. Alan Coates got collected in car number 90 at the Thompson Speedway. So we get ready to fire him back up. The green is out, Ernie Bertrand. A late start, but a very good one as he gets the upper hand again against Ed Reed. A man to keep your eye on is Tony Macrino in car number 13. Here comes Reed, barreling his way to the front. Reed like he was shot out of an air rifle. Reed can't get close enough to Bertrand, however, to get the lead, but he made it very interesting. Here comes Reed, lurking on the outside like a guided missile, and he will swirl his way into the lead. Macrino trying to follow his tire tracks, so Bertrand is shuffled back to second, and the man bottled up in traffic is Bruce Thomas Jr. He goes from third to fourth. Trouble for Tim Jordan as he wanders on the outside of the track. That car was two miles an hour faster than anybody else in practice, but right now it is on life support as it drifts at the rear of the field. The man in command, the 1997 champion, Ed Field Jr., or Ed Reed Jr., almost didn't make it to the track on time, but right now he is fireballing his way into the lead. In second is Tony Macrino. Macrino came to within whiskers of winning two features this season at the Speed Bowl. He has yet to win but he is all over the 61 car, like fuzz on a peach. In third is Thomas in car number 35. So our cars shimmy their way into turn number two. It is still Ed Reed in front. 
as Reed leads the charge in turn number three. Macrino now will bring it to the inside as they come off turn number four. Yellow will fly as Rich Durante is up in the barrier on turn number two with the Bob Valenti Auto Mall late models. Green is in the air and a huge jump by Ed Reed. He just jettisons his way out to the lead and right behind him, the 35 of Bruce Thomas also grabbed second away from Anthony Macrino as Thomas looks to apply some pressure to our leader, Ed Reed. Macrino third, battle for fourth as Richard Staskowski gets the five underneath the double zero of Bertrand. But right now the battle is on for the lead as Bruce Thomas makes a move to the inside of Ed Reed. Reed holds on by slivers as they come off turn number four. Now side by side, they rumble off turn number four. Down to the stripe by inches, it is Bruce Thomas, but Reed is not going away on the outside. Now Reed moves out in front as the battle rages for that lead as they come off turn number four. Right behind them, Anthony Macrino sits in third. Ernie Bertrand around off turn number four. He'll touch the wall in turn four, bringing out the yellow for the third time tonight with 16 laps left as Ernie Bertrand makes contact. They'll look to go three wide as Macrino dives into the inside of Eddie Reed. He has a fender underneath the 61, but not able to get up to speed. But now Macrino, as Reed just shoots himself into the lead as they go down into turn three. Ed Reed looking to hold off Anthony Macrino. Here comes Alan Coates to the outside of Bruce Thomas as they charge across the stripe. The 0-6 of Rick Martin moves off the pace and into the infield. Down the back stretch. But it is Ed Reed who leads the field in turn three. Anthony Macrino with another strong run. As he gets underneath Reed, he'll slide him up the track. Now Macrino with the lead as they go into turn one. And Bruce Thomas looks to get underneath the 61. He'll move into second spot, but Reed hangs on. And they go side by side into turn number three. Reed and Thomas battle for position number two as they come off turn four. By inches, it is Reed at the stripe. But Thomas looks to hang on as they go into turn one. Behind them is Alan Coates, and in fifth, the 47 of Tim Jordan. Slight advantage for Reed as they go into turn three. Thomas underneath, slides off turn four. That allows Reed a bit more of an advantage as they go into turn one. Reed looking to hang on. He has a half a car length over the 35, but down the backstretch, it is Bruce Thomas trying to get underneath Reed, but Reed clears the 35. He sits second. So Thomas is fading. Now here comes Coates to the outside. The battleship might be in trouble. Also, Tim Jordan, as we said, the buzzards were flying over that car in the paddock. They have tightened it up. And right now, Tim Jordan has tightened up the top five as our first five cars could fit inside a popcorn popper. But the man making the most noise is Tony Macrino. Deprived of a victory on two occasions here at the Speed Bowl. He is going to have to hold off the 1997 champion, Ed Reed, in order to get to victory lane. Also, Thomas looking for a resurgence. It looked like that car was on the verge of taking the lead. It has drifted back. Fourth is a battle between Coates and Jordan. Can Tony Macrino keep up the momentum? Here comes Reed looking for a crack down low. He has gotten the nostrils of that car underneath Macrino. Here he goes, trying to trampoline his way underneath the 13. Stay tuned. Here comes Reed again. Turn number two. Reed getting out in front by fingernails. They dive bomb into three. Thomas has come back to life in car number 33. Macrino drifts to the outside. He is in no man's land. Ed Reed is in the lead and dancing with him out into the front is Bruce Thomas Jr. When they hit the stripe, they'll have four laps to go. Another classic battle is developing. This time it is between Ed Reed and the battleship, Bruce Thomas. Reed gets into the corner first, also moving up. Jordan on the outside, or on the inside. Coates on the outside. So Coates has made it a fast foursome. Any one of five cars can win it with three laps to go. Ed Reed Jr. trying to hang on. Bruce Thomas, we have seen him make comebacks before. Now Macrino wants to get involved as he almost fireballed his way underneath the 35 car. These last two laps will be great. Can Ed Reed Jr. hang on? Final two laps as they charge across the straight. It is Ed Reed looking to hold off Bruce Thomas. Thomas will make a move to the inside as they go down into turn number three. He gets the right front on it. Reed slides up the track. Thomas moves underneath. Macrino slides underneath. 
white flag in the air. Thomas with the lead. Macrino is in second. And Ed Reed is trying to hang on to third as he looks to hold off Alan Coates. Down the back stretch they go into turn number three. He'll charge off turn number four. It'll be the battleship. Bruce Thomas with the win. Finishing in second, the 13 of Anthony Macrino. In third was the 61 of Ed Reed. Fourth will be the 90 of Alan Coates. Here is a man heading into victory lane. Bring it on, Bruce Thomas Jr. That is a finish we'll be talking about for a long time to come here at the Speed Bowl. And the man getting ready to climb out of the car. Here is Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Bruce Thomas Jr. Well, it was exciting two weeks ago. Another barn burner tonight. Take us through the end of the race. Has been, that's all I gotta say. Uh, I was clearly underneath him and he decided to turn left halfway down the straightaway. I was prepared to put on a good show for the fans, but obviously he didn't want, to, he didn't want that. So, uh, hey, what did he end up? Second, third? He could have won, but he messed it up for himself. Uh, I, gotta think my, I gotta think everybody has to do anything I have to do with racing. Uh, uh, my whole team, man, you fans, everything just, I, I, that's just a shame. I was, I was looking just past him, man. Uh, he obviously had better ideas. Well, Bruce, another victory. Another spine tingler at the Speed Bowl, Bruce Thomas, Jr.